All right, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create what's known as a residual plot inside of Google Sheets. So I'm just going to go into Google Sheets right now. And I'm going to create a new blank Google Sheet. Okay, and I'm just going to call this thing a uh, residual plot example. Okay, so the example that I'm going to do is uh, I have some data in front of me. It's basically about cars and how old the car is and what the repair costs are. So I'm going to start with that. So age of car. <clears throat> and then this one here, I'm going to say repair costs. I'm going to put in thousands. So if I had an answer of two, for example, that means it cost me $2,000 to fix my car. Okay, so I've got a few different points that I'm going to put in. So a four-year-old car, it has a repair cost of 0.6, so $600 in repair for a year. Another four-year-old car had 800 bucks, so that's where the 0 0.8 comes from. Another four-year-old car, this one was 3.2, so something really went wrong in this car. It cost $3,200 to fix that car this year. Who knows, maybe it was in an accident. Okay, five-year-old car, it's expenses of 1.1. A uh, six-year-old car, 1.2. Another six-year-old car has 1.5. Seven-year-old car is going to be 1.4. Eight-year-old car is 1.8. Nine-year-old car is 1.9. And the 10-year-old car is 2.1. And this makes sense. You know, as a car gets older, things tend to get more expensive to fix. You won't have as many issues when it's newer, but start getting into 10 years old, you're going to have a lot more problems. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, a scatter plot and I'll show you what this thing looks like. So I'm going to highlight this and go to Insert, Chart. Okay, right now by default it is a scatter plot, which is wanted. If, if it's not, make sure you select it here. And so it's going to look like this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in a line of best fit. So go under customize, go to series, and then we're going to add in a trend line right here. And along with the trend line, I'm also going to go to where it says label, show the equation. And that's the equation of my line right there. So the only thing is I really, I, had, I just have to add a Y equals in front of this thing. And that is my line of best fit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shove this over. And let me explain what a residual actually is. The residual basically is the distance between any given point and the line of best fit. So if you knew exactly where this line was right here, you could subtract these two to figure out that distance. That's the residual. So the residual of this point is quite high. The residual of this point is pretty small. It's only from here to here. So, But we can calculate each of these things. So what I can do is this. I can just say um, line of best fit right here. And I'm going to use the same equation I have here, but where the x is, I'm going to use these x's on the left side because the age of the car being 4, that's like the x value, right? These are like the y values. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write equals 0 0.0979 times... A2, I'm going to click there, plus 0.943. So 1.3343, that's what this, right here, that's what that height is, right there, 1.3343. Once the formula is done, and it looks exactly like my equation right here, I can actually just pull it down and figure out all the y values along the way. So these are what the y values are. You know, when x is 10, that's the y value. It's 1.992. So right there, that's what that point is, 1.992. Now, to get the residuals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the data point and subtract away the y value of the line. So in this case, I'm going to do 0 0.6 minus 1.3346. So I'm just going to go equals this cell, which is 0 0.6, minus this cell. Just like that. So it's B2 minus D2. Hit enter. And one sec here. 
Oh, I know why. I'm like, why is it negative? It's negative because uh, this point, the 0 0.6, is actually this low point. It's below the line. That's why it's negative. This one here, the 3.2, that's the one that will be positive. Okay, the next one we can go is 0 0.8 minus 1.33, and we get that. And the nice thing with Google Sheets, we can just drag down the formula, and it should work for all of them. Okay, so we've got all of our residual values now. Now, to make a residual plot, what I need to do is graph these values here. These are my x's, and these are going to be my y's. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is going to look like. I'm just going to put this on another uh, sheet just so it's out of the way. And I'm going to highlight this column first. And I'm on a Mac right now. I'm going to hit Command and hold and highlight this. On a PC, I think you'd have to hold Control to do that. Um, try that out, see if that works. It might be Alt, I'm not totally sure. But anyways, you gotta make both of these columns get highlighted. And then we're gonna go to Insert, Chart, and we're gonna do another scatter plot, which is exactly what we want. It looks like this right here. We can, if you want, add in a trend line on this thing. Oops, it's in our series. It's not really necessary as much. The trend line basically is zero. So you don't really need to add that in because we already have an axis. And that is it right there. So this is my residual plot. And the reason that we create these sometimes is um, sometimes it can be kind of tough when you're looking at this graph here to actually identify outliers. Um, what we want to do is we want to be able to potentially remove outliers and see what happens. So let's look at this example right now. So this one here. I'm just going to uh, customize one thing on it. Um, edit it. I'm going to go here and go back to my line of best fit. And I'm going to add in the R squared. Okay. So the higher this number is, the more accurate it is. Like the more accurate the line of best fit is. So, But what we want to do is we want to square root this thing. Because R squared is meant for like curves of best fit. We're doing the line of best fit. Let's just see how linear this actually is. I'm just going to go into the calculator for a second. And I'm going to square root 0 0.8. So square root oop, 0 0.08. Square root is 0.28. So it's actually not really that linear. It's not like, it's only like, like basically what this is telling me is it's, it's essentially 28% accurate the line. Okay. So that's pretty low. The closer this number is to 1, the better. So this is not very accurate right now. I suspect this dot right here is a big problem. And when I look at my residual plot, that dot is way, way, way above compared to everything else. Everything else is pretty close to the line, to the, the middle line of 0. So I'm going to remove that and see what happens. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to copy these right here. And I'm going to do it on a new sheet. I don't want to mess my original data up. I'm going to call this thing modified data. And I'm going to paste that. And that point that's the problem is definitely the uh, the 3.21. It's, it's this one right here. This is what's causing the big issue. So I'm going to remove it and see what happens. So I'm going to delete that out. I've got a gap here, so I'm just going to move everything up. So highlight everything. Make your hand, make it go to the edge and it turns into a hand and you can pull it. Oops. Just to clean it up like that. And I'm now going to add in another uh, scatter plot with a line of best fit. Go to Customize, Series, Trend Line. Okay, it definitely looks better. Now, what happens with the. So we do have a different equation, that's fine. But what about this R squared? Okay, now we got a 0.937. That's way higher than the other one. So if you look at this one, we're starting at 0 0.08. That's pretty inaccurate. Okay, 0 0.937 looks a lot better. Let's actually figure out the, uh, the, the, the square root of that. What's R itself? So 0.937. Square root is 0.967. So very, very, very strong linear correlation here once I remove that data point. So that's that's the whole point of a residual plot. The residual plot, 
you create those things just so it's easier to see where the outliers are and you can make a judgment call whether this point is an outlier or not. Uh, this one pretty clearly is compared to the rest of them. And then once you remove it, then you know hopefully your data is a little more accurate, right? This is a lot more accurate once I remove that, that uh, outlier there. And uh, yeah, so again, the way I, I figured out the residual for each point is I generated the line of best fit, used the equation to figure out the y value of each point, and then I subtracted the actual value from the, the y value here to get the residuals. So hopefully this made sense to you, and uh, again, this is another thing in your statistical analysis toolbox.